As a young agronomist, one of the first bugs I had a lot of dealings with was the grasshopper. It's a terrible insect, but fortunately, if you've got good moisture conditions, you usually don't see a real big problem with grasshoppers. Well, it certainly can be a tough bug, and with grasshopper, we don't normally think about it spreading disease through the field or something like that. We're just looking at the leaf feeding, and it can be substantial when you get a large number of grasshoppers moving into a field. The one good thing with grasshoppers is there's just one generation per year. It's going to start with what we call the nymph stage, and then it's going to go through a molting process where basically it sheds its old shell and continues to grow. Once it gets to the adult stage, then most grasshoppers are going to have wings. Once you see wings, basically you know you're in trouble. That bug is tougher to kill, it's going to do a lot more feeding, and it's mobile. One of the other problems once that grasshopper reaches the adult stage is it can lay eggs, and now we've got next year's problem already started. So when we see grasshoppers in a ditch, for example, and you say, oh, they're just in the ditch, they're not out into my crop yet, hey, that's a great time to spray them. They haven't caused any crop damage, and now you aren't gonna have them laying eggs in that ditch where next year they could come out in your field too. So this is the interesting thing with grasshoppers. Normally with bugs, we talk about economic damage or what's the economic threshold in the crop. And what Darren is saying here is, I've got a crop sitting right next to this ditch where the grasshoppers are, so at the moment, it's caused zero economic damage. I have nothing in terms of an economic threshold, yet I still want to spray. I know it doesn't make a tremendous amount of sense, but what we do see with these grasshoppers is they're going to move in, like I said earlier, in swarms. So they're just going to start marching into that field, and it happens especially when you've cut off their food. So if that ditch starts to get dry and you see the grass starting to turn brown, that'd be a good time to spray. If you're going to cut the ditch, that would be a good time to spray just before that. Beat the pre-harvest interval, so in other words, spray about seven days before you're going to cut that off. That way you can control all the grasshoppers before they march into the field that's right next to it. The other alternative would be just to spray around the ends of your fields. So spray around the end rows with insecticide. And we often see farmers doing this for a number of different pests. Maybe it's stalk borer in corn. Uh, the last time you can get around the end of the field before the corn is getting a little too tall, putting insecticide in that pass just to stop some of these bugs that are going to come out of the ditches or come out of the grassy areas uh, in waterways and so forth and move out into your field. All right, when we talk about how much defoliation does it take to justify treatment, here are the two things we want you to look at. Number one, what's the economic injury? What I would suggest you do, since we're just talking defoliation here, is just look at all the hail charts that are out there. You can just search online for different hail charts put out by universities. At certain stages of growth, they will tell you roughly what you're going to have for yield loss, and then you just figure out, well, what's your value per bushel times the yield loss, now you know economic damage. Then take a look at how much does it actually cost to spray. Usually the insecticide's gonna cost $2, and then whatever your application cost is on top of that. The other thing is just to look, if your crop is in a reproductive stage of growth, that's a pretty sensitive time, and if the grasshoppers are feeding uh, and it's going to hurt you, it's going to take away seed, well, that's a different story. Now, normally we're looking at them chewing on leaves, but if they are cutting off pods on a soybean plant, for example, or uh, feeding on the tassel or the silks or something like that on corn, well, that's gonna change the game. Then you know they're causing an economic problem and you have to get out there. The other thing to think about is, if they're not to that adult stage yet, they're still pretty easy to kill, and like Brian was saying, it doesn't cost much money. Once they reach that adult stage, it takes a little different product and perhaps a little different rate of product to control them. Well, I don't know what different product you're going to use, Lorsman. Darren. We, use, we used to talk about Furidan. I don't think Lorsman is any better than the pyrethroids. I really don't. If it's me, I'm still sticking with a cheap pyrethroid. It's going to be just fine. But yes, our percent control isn't going to be as good, most likely, once they've hit the adult stage. Darren mentioned this earlier, too, but if you can, spray before they hit the adult stage because we want to stop next year's grasshoppers from being there. If we can kill these bugs before they lay eggs, hey, that should help us in the long term. Well, grasshoppers are certainly important to keep out of any crop you really like. Uh, treat them when they're smaller because it's easier and also treat them before they destroy your crop. That's a good thing to do too. One other thing that would be really good to do on your farm is to stop our Weed of the Week. We'll show you how to do that coming up next.